Recording audio on your computer, 90s style. Yes, you're listening to me right now, and indeed all of this introduction via an Amiga sampled in. I've recorded it into the Amiga, and you're hearing this audio being played out, because today we're talking about sound sampling on your Amiga. And this video has been delayed a little bit, because I, I did it about oh, 18 months ago, two years ago, and I was never really happy with it. About the same time I did the hand scanner and the video, and then someone else put out a sampling video, and I thought, no. So here we are in 2021, and we're going to be looking at this Technosound Turbo Amiga Stereo sound sampling system. And before I run out of memory, let's cut back to normal audio. Now, if you've been watching Top of the Pops on BBC4 lately, you'll know that the early 90s was the peak for sampling. Betty Boo and all that height immensely. You took analogue audio into your computer, you turned it into digital audio, and then you could manipulate it in any way you wanted. Of course, this music was often created on dedicated samplers, which was controlled using MIDI from a microcomputer such as an Atari ST and a BBC Micro in the earlier days with the Pet Shop Boys as well. Amiga used a little bit, but really not so much. But today we are looking at a sampler on the Amiga. On the Amiga, a sampler was a very important thing to have because Paula, the Amiga sound chip, can only play back samples. It is not a sound generator such as the AY chip in the ST, Amstrad CPC and 128K Spectrums or the SID chip, which is also a sound generator. In short, you had to get samples into your Amiga to make it make most audio. So from release, the Amiga had an 8-bit digital sound chip built in. And I really, really don't want to get technical today. But in terms of audio quality, a CD held up as pretty much for normal people the gold standard of audio plays samples at 16 bits 44.1 kilohertz so 16 bit depth 44.1 kilohertz sample rate which gives you half of that as a as a frequency response the amiga with its 8 bit chip cannot achieve the detail you get at cd quality inverted commas the same way that with 8-bit colour depth on your computer, you get less colours than you do at 16-bit or 24-bit colour depth. This is a massive oversimplification, but as I say, I want to keep this simple, lest the Simon Quinlanx descend on the comments yet again. They're the king of all hobbies, you know. The other limitation with the Amiga, and this is a biggie, is memory. A CD stores approximately 74 minutes of 16-bit audio that's also stereo in 640 megabytes. I know you can extend that, but yeah. A base Amiga has 512k of storage, so half a meg, with an 800k floppy disk to store everything on. So again, less than a meg. So if you've got your 74 meg minutes at 640 megabytes, you can imagine how much smaller the it, everything is on the Amiga. However, today, of course, you can use compression in order to reduce your memory and storage footprint, but harder to do that in real time with sampling. So what you did was you reduced your sample rate. If you reduced your sample rate, you used less memory, which uh, reduced the quality, but um, use less disk space. So after all the boring technical stuff, that's just an overview there. What we have here is the Tetna Sound Turbo Sound Sampler. A version 2 of this sampler was sold. It appears to be, in fact, the same unit with a different box and updated software. In my box here, I've actually got the updated software, so effectively, I've got version 2 in a version 1 box. So we look at the box, and it's clearly been designed on an Amiga when you start look looking closely at the resolution of some of the graphics on the front. The Amiga looks very futuristic because they've been unable to render a CRT properly and have chopped off the side of the monitor somehow, so it looks like a flat panel display years before such things were available. Amiga format rating, five stars. The front screams, Technosound Turbo Amiga Stereo Sound Sampling System. On the back, we have a lot of text, as they used to like to put on these things, and a blue-on-blue -blue text, which I'm having trouble reading here. 
But we, we'll start off on the right-hand side first. Now you can be a recording engineer with over 100 advanced studio-style functions available at the touch of a button. Hmm, chinny reckon. You can create and mix your own charts, sounds, add realistic effects to games, produce stunning demos, or simply enhance the quality of your sound source with incredible real-time sound. Enhance the quality, okay. You get a song sequencer, a MIDI sequencer, a whole load of effects. You get also get real-time effects, editing effects, exciting things such as cut, copy, splice, paste. You can also add effect. So, okay, yeah, they're just repeating themselves there. Um, loop your samples, yeah, and they're getting desperate down, down here with... Allows you to load and save files in IFF or binary format. Yes. And you can see the different displays of the box on the side of the box there. You open it up. And what do you get inside? You get an incongruous looking box with a label coming off here that has a screw underneath with two phono connectors not marked left or right on this. So you get to work that one out. Um, sitting underneath the label there, Care Electronics Made in England. Uh, it plugs into the parallel port there, and that's already that's, there's only one little circuit board inside. It's an A to D converter. You get some audio leads with it. I've got a load of discs in here as well, some of which contain samples and an Amiga format disc that contains Technosound Turbo 2. Yes, Amiga format gave away the software, but not the sampler. So that, that's good. I've got the original Technosound V1 disc. And we also get somewhere in here uh, a manual, I think. Here's a manual. Amiga Stereo Sampling manual. It tells you about uh, Paris's theft. And it teaches you how to use the software. All the basic stuff there. Not, not hugely detailed, but it tells you how to use everything in there. There's also an app built in that allows you to grab audio out of memory. So you might have had a game in memory, and then you can try and grab samples from the game into the sampler. The Technosound Turbo, like most Amiga sound samplers of, of this type, connects via the parallel port, and it contains an analog to digital converter and not much else inside. You input line level audio via the two phono connectors. It can sample stereo audio and has a maximum sample rate of 98 kilohertz and a signal to noise ratio of approximately 30 dB. In practice, you can't sample anywhere near 98 kilohertz or the general uh, maximum in normal usage, which I think is something like 52 kilohertz, something like roughly there. You can't sample that high. We can we got a problem, and it's something called the Nyquist limit, which is, a, a, again, I don't want to get too technical, it's a function of your bit depth. It basically means you can't keep on pushing the sample rate to get increased sound quality because you get all sorts of other artefacting and problems occurring. So on an 8-bit sampling device like this, I think your maximum is something like 22, 24 kilohertz, something like that. With a 16-bit, it's usually 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. And then you go up and do 96 at 24-bit and so on. It, it's complicated. All you need to know is you can't push the sampling rate forever for increased quality. It doesn't work like that. As, as I mentioned, the device has 30 dB signal-to-noise ratio, which means, means you basically end up with a noise floor that is comparable to a kind of poor-quality ferric cassette in a cheap to average tape deck and the Amiga does however have a built-in filter for playback. The software runs from Workbench although if you have limited RAM in your Amiga you may prefer to boot straight from the floppy as you get more free RAM. My Amiga has 64 meg in compact flash storage, uh, a luxury you wouldn't have had back in the day and yes for the Simon Quinn Lanx I'm going to be pushing this limit far further than you would ever have done on an A500 or even a base level A1200. On your Amiga back in the day, because of memory limitations and so on, you wouldn't have been editing audio on this like I'm going to be editing this recording when I come to do it on my Mac. You would have been creating short samples to put on a disc, be that for 
inclusion in games or general playback, or just uh, using a or, or using a tracker uh, and so on. We're going to look at tracking software later, but I want to see how what this thing can actually do and how it sounds compared to modern audio. So I've sampled in some music uh, from an uncompressed flack that was taken from some clean vinyl. Now I've probably introduced some noise there because I've sampled this at 32 kilohertz and I probably would have been better off at 24 and therefore there's going to be some Nycrest problems going on. But at least that gives you an idea of the maximum stereo quality you can achieve. You can get better quality if you run the device in mono, but obviously then it won't be stereo. I want to show you how unfeasible sampling like this actually is. Here's a three minute song that I've done at a slightly lower sample rate. I've saved it to disc and you can see it actually takes up eight meg. So yeah, you know, not practical to store on your floppy disc. I think the most I ever got on a floppy disc was about three quarters of a song at about seven, six or seven kilohertz, something like that. And to give you an idea of how much data is emitted on a PC, this track that's 8 meg on the Amiga at about 22 kilohertz, 8 bits, a 44 kilohertz, 16 bits, it takes up 30 meg. And that, of course, is also including some overheads that the PC and Mac will have in their file systems. So that's really just showing off, okay? What you'd actually be doing with this sampler is taking short clips of audio to mess around with. There's no way you'd be editing audio like I'm speaking to you now. The quality simply wasn't good enough. The most you'd be doing is altering small clips with the very basic tools included. The software has a number of effects built in, lets you adjust volume, add delay, echo, and add fades ins and fade outs. It's all rather crude by today's standards, no matter what the box says, but it's enough to do what you need to be doing here. You're going to be clipping up short snippets to use in your game or as part of a larger composition. I've also found the waveform display in this very crude. I'm a long time audio editor, 25 years, feel old. And I found that this editing on the Amiga very imprecise and hard to get to grips with coming back to it from modern editors such as Audition. You can also adjust the sample rate in the software to alter the playback speed, but remember to make a note of where you started at because the software won't remember for you unless you reload the sample in. To record audio, you set a sample rate and some meters appear on the screen to give you a preview. These are completely useless. They only serve to show you there's actually audio going in. Then when you hit your mouse button, the screen goes black and it will start transferring the data in and you will have no indication of how much memory you have left when it is recording in. So there's some trial and error involved. To let daylight in upon magic, this bit you're hearing now is recorded a month after the last bit you heard when the rest of the video was done. This video has been on Patreon for, well, about a few weeks now, actually. And Steve Anderson, who saw this video on there of Steve's programming laundrette fame from your Sinclair, wanted to add a couple of things. He says the reason the screen goes blank is because he thinks the strobe line is being abused on the parallel port for, to get the DAC data over the 8 bits that are usually used for ASCII on the parallel port. It's time critical, so it has to shut down all other processes, including updating the screen to prevent glitches. And of course, this has the side effect of you have no idea when your memory is going to run out. Here I am on a 64 meg Amiga, but I'm not going to run out of memory. On a standard Amiga, you could run out of memory quite quickly and the recording will just stop and you'll have trial and error trying to work out what your maximum memory is. The other thing Steve points out is stereo samplers always had inferior quality compared to mono ones because there's a single channel DAC that's kind of multiplexed across the two channels and there's a limit how quickly the hardware can switch between them and sample. So there we go, let's time travel now back to March. Thanks to Steve who did all that on Patreon. Thanks Steve. The package also lets you process live audio via a range of very crude effects you control from the keyboard. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Novelty value here, but of little practical use. The quality is just far too low. Certainly be too hard on the ears for things like karaoke. This live sampling capability also means that back in the day, I was able to use a sampler to load games into my early Spectrum emulator on my Amiga 1200. Yes, it didn't even manage to run at full Spectrum speed, but it was enough and it was a novelty. Indeed, some of the snapshots I created from games loaded in via this method may still be floating around some very dark corners of the internet to this day. So we talked about getting short samples to make music. Well, Technosound comes with some tracking software to produce your own mod files. Mod files being the Amiga tracker format. A tracker allows you to sequence samples across the Amiga's four channels to make music. While this software has its own tracker, in reality, you'd want to be using the gold standard Amiga tracker, Pro Tracker. Other trackers are available, but they're not as good. I've lost all my tracker skills over the years. I did used to play around with Pro Tracker, but Mike Richmond has kindly sent me this footage of Pro Tracker in action. And you can see, and you can see where in the tracker you can alter where each sample is played, the tempo, as well as the speed and pitch of each sample. You have access to all four channels of the Pooler chip, and a tracker like the one you're seeing here is the way most Amiga music would have been written. There's a whole community around this stuff and people better qualified than me to talk about it. So I won't go into trackers in depth, but basically this is a, the major way you would have used all those short samples you captured into your Amiga. Would you still use one of these today to create Amiga music? Probably not. These samplers are extremely crude devices and the modern tools on PCs and Macs are far, far better. You can sample into your modern computer at 16 or 24 bit and then down convert it to 8 bit at your desired sample rate. Audition lets you do that. The algorithms in the software give far better results. It's night and day. You're still limited by the bit depth and your sample rate, but the results are far, far easier. On your ears, the harshness has gone, there's smoothing, there's all sorts, and kind of anti-aliasing for audio. It works it out and makes it sound far better. You don't get that crunchy sound. So there you go, that's sound sampling on the Amiga. We've learned about um, sample rates and 8 versus 16 bit and sequencers and all sorts of other things. And okay, today not much practical use because of course you can sample in on your modern computer and then put it into your Amiga if you're doing sequencing on your Amiga. You wouldn't really need to use an original sound sampler with all its inherent noise, floor, and all the rest of it. But I found this really interesting. Just I found the hand scanner interesting and the VIDI interesting as well. I owned all three of these things. I didn't have a tetanus sound back in the day. I had another model. I used to have quite a bit of fun with it and I sampled in lots of bits from Red Dwarf backwards and, and things like that. And yeah, uh, still worth a go today. Very, very affordable to buy as well to have a play around with on your Amiga. But remember, you do need lots of memory. My Amiga has 64 megabytes. Your A500 may only have half a meg, which you can't get much into. So hence why you've seen so some of the samples in this video are so long, just simply because I can. Thanks for watching. Remember there's Shinny Vision 2 as well on the Patreon, all the other bits. You can join in the fun details in the description below. See you soon.